All right, hello everybody. Uh, today we're gonna learn how to turn a JPEG into a PNG. Um, a JPEG, uh, you might know, is a common file type. So if I looked up an animal, like I'm gonna look up a horse here, um, and I go to the image search, um, a JPEG would be, you know, any old image of a horse um, here. However, you'll notice there are some images of horses that have this white background, and that's because everything's been cropped out of them, and oftentimes it's because they've been turned into a PNG. A PNG would look something more like this. If I add the word uh, letters PNG after horse, then we get this. And when I come in here, if I click on one of these, you'll notice that there's a white background on the thumbnail that I clicked on. However, there's a checkered background um, behind the horse. That is a PNG, and this is what I want to show you how to make. What's cool about that is that checkered background is like a piece of glass, and that horse is basically like a sticker or a paper doll um, that you're going to be able to place on as an object on something else. And so today, uh, let's go ahead and find um, a nice uh, horse JPEG. And um, oh, here's a cool one. Now there's some snow and stuff like that. That's okay. Um, we can live with that for right now. This will be the general gist. I'll show you how to get that one here. This is a nice big image. Uh, it's 1742 by 1162. That's a pretty big um, uh, image pixel wise. I can right click on this one. I don't want to right click on the original thumbnail. Um, just right click on the big one. Go save image as. And I'm going to name it as a horse. And it's going to get downloaded um, by default to my downloads folder in my PC. If you're on a Chromebook, it'll go to your Google Drive. All right, let's go ahead and try this out. Um, I already have an object named horse, so it's asked me, do I want to replace it? Yes, I do. If I was on a Chromebook, a lot of times it'll replace it automatically, though. It won't ask you, and that's a little bit of a problem. So be careful what you name things, because you could lose other files. Um, if I'm not sure where that file went, I have this little tab down here next on my download at the base. I can click on that tab and go show in folder. And there's my horse um, object right there. All right. In the meantime, I'm gonna go back to my web browser. I'm gonna open a new tab, and I'm gonna go to Pixlr. I'm gonna type it in pixlr.com, and then I also am gonna go slash, which is next to period, E. And that gets me to the editor. If I just go to pixlr.com, it takes me to this web page, which gives me advanced Pixlr E and playful Pixlr X. I wanna to go to advanced Pixlr E in this case. And up here, you'll see that change the web address to pixlr.com slash e. It has an extra slash. You don't have to type that last one in. All right, you can see I was working on a fox earlier. Um, I'm going to open my image now. I can come over here to the side. I've got history, create new stock search, open image. I hit open image. I'm going to come over here and go find my horse that I just downloaded. There it is. Open my horse. Cool. What a great image. So you see there's some snow and stuff like that obscuring the horse. So we're gonna have a little bit of a tricky time here with this leg, but the rest of this we should be okay on. Um, in Pixlr here, you'll notice that there's uh, image got opened up as a background layer. See this little lock here? That lock we want to um, unlock by double clicking that icon, that little lock icon. I'm gonna go double click uh, with the left, left click, one, two, and that goes away. What that allows me to do is now I can edit this image. Um, really easy way to start with something like this is to come over here to your toolbar and you're going to find your wand select. Um, you can also press W to get to this. And the magic wand, um, if I just click on a uh, color um, in this picture, it selects everything that is similar to that color. And you see what it just did? It just grabbed the outline of this horse. I'm looking around. Looks like it did a pretty good job. I can zoom in with my scroll bar. It looks like it did it did a nice job overall. Now, what you're noticing too is, see all this snow down here? That snow didn't get picked up. Um, so we're gonna have some more objects to delete, right? Because that snow is too white versus this blue background. This is an easy image to do because of the solid color in the background. And once I've selected that, I can press delete on my keyboard and it deletes everything out that is uh, selected. Now the hard part is, well, how do you get off of this? If you click, like I, I got some more blue I wanna get rid of in here, I can just click on it, but I can't make the, um, the lines go away. If I want the lines to go away, I go Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac, um, but I can come in here and I can select that blue 
You see I can get that little patch. I'm going to hold down control. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, control. And actually, I, I don't need to do that. Oh, it's control and shift. That's what it is. If I hold down control and shift, I can select um, multiple objects. So I can get some more of that. And then I can hit backspace and delete that out. There we go. Um, and now I still have a lot of blue around the horse. And I'll show you how to do this in a more refined way here in a bit. You see how I have a blue outline around the horse? That's sort of problematic. Um, in the meantime, though, I'm going to go to my eraser tool um, over here. Uh, let's see, where'd my eraser go? I've got my heel tool, blur, sharpen, sponge. Here's the eraser. I'll click on the eraser. And right now, if I try to erase something, nothing's working. Why? Because I still have lines selected over here. Oh, I can close out the ads. I still have lines selected over here. Um, because something's still selected, I can only delete what's inside of those, those lines. And everything's already been deleted. So I'm going to go Control D to get rid of that. And now um, I have uh, control over my eraser. All right. So in the eraser here, um, you can uh, delete objects, uh, anything that is in a selected area. You see that? I, I can't delete things that are outside of that area. If nothing is selected, if I'm on control D and nothing is selected, when I go to hit that eraser, Oops, oh, yep, yeah, it still works. Look at that. Now this eraser, um, what, what if I wanted to make it a little bigger to get rid of these spots? Um, I could go over here to the size and I could make that a much bigger eraser. Like that. And then what happens if I accidentally delete part of the horse though? Whoops. Then I need to go Control Z. Control Z undoes. So I can go back there and take care of that. Now my eraser is too big to get around here, around the feet. So I'm going to zoom in um, using the roll bar on my mouse or uh, two fingers to, to swipe up and down to zoom in and out. And I'm going to get a smaller um, brush size. Here we go. Yeah, that'll work. So I'm just cleaning that up. So the eraser is just one way to do this. Um, if you wanted to get super refined, you can actually come in here and zoom all the way in until you can get individual pixels. And you can take your eraser all the way down to a single pixel and erase single pixels. Now, you've, you've got a lot of stuff to delete. I would not recommend doing this, but this is a great way to delete kind of the edge of an object, right? So you can get in there and get pretty refined with it. But you'll see this could take a long time. Same thing in here. If I wanted to delete the blue around the horse, I could do that. But notice that, like some of the the fur and or uh, the, the some of the horse's uh, tail, it looks like here, it's just been turned blue because the image exposed it to too much blue light um, to really be able to to grab that. So um, we might be out of luck there. As I come up to the top of the horse, if I come up here, go in there and start deleting stuff. And so you see, this could take quite a while. Um, I could use my magic wand again and select things. This is another way you can go in there and delete some of that stuff off and then clean stuff, off, uh, clean stuff up. Here's another really handy tool though. It's called the lasso select. And this allows me to draw a line. And even if it's not touching, if I let go of my mouse, um, you'll see it just snapped together in a box there. And then I can hit delete and it deletes it all off. So I can get rid of objects that way as well. There's also straight up a box that you can select things with. Delete things inside of the box if I hit delete. Um, so lots and lots of lo uh, options in here. All right. Um, now this is not perfect by any means, but I'm going to go back to the original to show you some more techniques. Before I do that, though, I'm going to show you how to save this. If we go up to File and go up to Save, Control S. Then you have up here, you have JPEG, and you see how it turns the whole background white? Well, that's a bit of a problem because that's basically gonna turn everything into a JPEG, uh, they, like it'll be solid, it won't be transparent. 
If you want the transparency, you want to select the PNG file type. And that gives you that checkered background, so that gives you that glass-like background. All right, um, in here you got the image width, image height. Um, I can name it. My last uh, file was called horse.jpg. This one's called horse.png. And if I hit download, it's gonna go into my Google Drive if I'm on a Chromebook, but if I'm on a computer, it'll go into my uh, PC download or Mac download, whichever one you're using. So if I hit download there, it gets downloaded. And you see my original one was horse.jpg. Now I have a horse.png. Okay, um, what's cool about that horse.png is if I went out here and I pulled up a image of a meadow, and I went to an image search, and let's see, I got a nice meadow here. Oh, that looks lovely. Much smaller image though. I'm gonna see if I can find one that's a little closer to the image size that we used earlier. Uh, looks like no luck so far. Ooh, there's a nice size meadow. Okay, I'm gonna right click this one, save image as. There we go, save it as a meadow. I'm gonna clean that up. I'm just gonna call it meadow. So here's the fun part about PNGs. If I go back over here to Pixlr, and then I go down to my Meadow JPEG and I'm going to pull it out of my downloads. And then over here, I can just straight up click and drag. Um, if, if you have like a second window, let's say we have something like this. And I'm going to pull over another window here that has my file. I can straight up click and drag that in is one way I can do that. Another way I could do the same thing is by going up here to um, uh, layer and I could go add image as layer and if I click add image as layer then I can go down find my meadow and open it and there it is so here's the fun part I have that meadow and I have the the horse that's behind it over here on my layers whatever layers on top is the one that's in the front if I click on one of those and I drag it I can flip them around and now the horse is in front of the meadow but obviously the horse is too big right now I do have something selected up there. I'm gonna get rid of that, just to make sure I'm not making any mistakes. I'm gonna go Control D, deselect that. And on this horse, um, I can use my selection tool. I can select this horse, and then I can hold down Shift, and I can warp that horse. If I don't hold down Shift, you'll see it snaps it into perspective. If I just click and drag, I can just move the horse. If I do the Shift, then that horse goes into all sorts of crazy positions. If I let go of Shift, there it goes. And that, what sh holding that shift does is it switches between fixed and free. So if I wanted this horse to fit in this meadow, I might do something like that. Get rid of the ad here. And I can click off of it, and voila, you have the horse um, playing in the meadow. It's jumping in the meadow. Obviously, it had some snow on it still. Now, I told you we were going to do something a little more refined with this horse, though. Um, so let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to save this image one more time. Uh, before I do that, though, I guess I could crop it. And what cropping does is that allows me to um, kind of cut an image down to size. So I could grab the corners of this image that I've created. Uh, this is the cropping tool over here, that box looking thing, crop. Uh, once it's there, I got where I want, I double click on the image. Whoops, that didn't quite work, my apologies. There's a couple things that have happened since the new Pixar came out. Let's see if I hit enter. There it goes. If I hit enter, it cropped it down to size. So I can come up here, go file, save, and I'm going to call this horse in meadow, just for kicks and giggles. And I can save that as a PNG, even though it's not transparent, a portable graphic file. But in this case, I just need a JPEG, nothing, nothing too complex here. The PNG is 1.2 megabytes. The JPEG is only two, 216 kilobytes, so much smaller image by about, um, it's about a sixth the size of the PNG. And that's fine. That'll work just fine. I'll hit download there. All right, so what's one more way we can do this? We got the little ads that pop up there. Sorry about that. Um, let's go back to our original image of the horse. I'm going to go up here, file, open image, and I'm going to go back to our original picture of the horse on the, in the snow. Another thing that I could do, I wish I'd mentioned earlier, is when you're using the magic wand tool, you have this thing called tolerance up here. And tolerance, right now the default on mine is set to 32. I'm not sure where yours will be. And if I clicked on that object, that's what we originally got. Now, when I hit delete, do you see how it still had, and I go control D, see how it still has a blue outline around it? 
Well, what if we wanted to get that a little more refined? So I'm going to go Control Z a couple of times, twice, undo it. And this time, um, I can go Control D and unselect the horse. I'm going to change my tolerance. What happens if I crank it all the way up? OK. And I then I clicked, and I hit Delete. Boom. Whoa, way too much, right? So the tolerance changed how far away from blue was it going to select? And in this case, it selected a lot. Now we have like this, um, looks like a, a horse that's just totally opaque. So let's undo that a bit. Go back to the original. And let's find a different tolerance. So it was 32 originally. It was not enough. 100 and something was way too much. Let's try 40. Clicking, deleting, Control D to de deselect. Ah, I still got that blue line. Let's try a little more. And so this is where you can kind of um, get that tolerance just a little more um, in there. I can click again. Whoops, I need to hit Control D first to deselect. Go back to my magic wand, tolerance of 54. Let's try deleting now, Control D. Well, the blue line's getting thinner and thinner. You see, it's not as noticeable when you go out. So you can keep playing with the tolerance and, and get that, that PNG just a little more cleaned up. All right, um, I think that'll be it for today. Um, hope you enjoyed that quick little tutorial on how to turn a JPEG into a PNG. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.